Hello everyone. Uh, yeah, it's the time of year. Uh, I'm starting my indoor seeds. Uh, in particular, the really early ones I want to start, uh, like peppers. So I've been starting those uh, throughout the mid to late part of January, and I've got a bunch uh, well on their way to growing. I'll show you some of those right now. For those of you that watched uh, my last year's video, this has kind of been kind of a different experience for me. Uh, things germinated extremely fast last year. This year, just for whatever reason, they germinated, but not quite as quickly. Uh, some of them germinated in like four or five days, which is pretty pretty fast, but uh, some of my super hots, I was having a little bit of trouble, but now they're finally starting to pick up. I switched uh, methods a couple times, um, but some of my seeds were two years old. I didn't really save all my seeds from last year. I just, uh, I felt like I had enough, and... Uh, I was pretty tired of saving all the seeds since I did that with pretty much everything else. So let me just have, take you in for a quick look of uh, what I uh, did, what I do have going so far. Uh, right here we got my uh, yellow bell pepper. These are just started off as supermarket pepper. Um, I did the same thing last year. It was kind of funny. I got some kind of nasty comments in my videos saying, "Oh, don't do that. You know, you'll grow, uh, you know." Frankenstein type hybrid type plant that'll taste terrible and be different colors and everything else. Well, you know what? By the time I got most of those comments, I'd actually already harvested a nice yellow bell pepper that pretty much tasted the same as a grocery store. So, I don't know. I think it's okay. I'm going to do it again. But feel free to leave nasty comments. I enjoy reading them too. Next, I got a red bell pepper. Same deal. Grocery store. Not much worth talking about with that. Oh, I also got uh, three different varieties. Well, actually I got more than three. Uh, I was in a seed giveaway contest that uh, Rob Bob, he's a pretty popular uh, character on here. Um, he had a contest. I actually was one of the winners and he sent just a crazy generous uh, pack of different seeds. Uh, a few of them were peppers and uh, I decided to plant I think at least three three of them uh, from him. Uh, so uh, some of the ones that I did get from him, they did germinate very quickly. Um, one of them is Bishop's Crown. That's these ones. They're doing well. That's like a sweet pepper. Uh, I'm going to try and include some photographs in this video. We'll see how good my editing skills work with that. This one is the Bull's Horn, I believe, or something of that variation. That's right here. They're looking really great. And also he sent me some yellow seven pot seeds, which is an extremely hot pepper. Um, I haven't personally tasted one, but I've seen a lot of pretty interesting videos of people eating them. So that'll be fun to try. Yeah, so I'm excited to grow those. Uh, thanks again, Rob Bob. I was glad to win your contest, and uh, I'm going to be growing a lot more things from that. Uh, very nice selection of seeds that I, I want. I still really appreciate that. Uh, next I'm growing a peppercini pepper. I really enjoy these. Now, I don't see a lot of people growing them, but I, I really like them. I, I enjoy pickling certain things and I tried uh, pickling these for my first time last year. Didn't even really use a recipe, just kind of looked on the internet for some guidelines and it worked great. Uh, I actually didn't have a full jar, so I threw in a few uh, jalapenos and uh, it really made a nice mix. So yeah, I'm really excited. Uh, it's the one thing that some people commented uh, when I, I, you know, I gave some local friends some uh, some of the peppers. They commented, why are they red? Pepperoncinis are yellow. Well, it turns out, uh, you know, where they grow pepperoncinis most often, you know, they grow them in Greece and Italy. Uh, those are places with uh, shorter sunlight days, but hotter days. So something like that causes them to uh, ripen quicker without turning red. Uh, where I am in kind of a semi-northern climate, uh, everything as far as peppers, they, they are red by the time they're ripe. So anyways, that's, that's all I know about that. Next I have some of my kind of late starters. I did start these around the same time as the other ones, but they took a lot longer to germinate. Um, oh, I have more pepperoncini because I like them a lot, but these ones took a lot longer. Uh, I have red ghost pepper. These are coming out here. 
These have only been in the soil maybe four days, I think. So they're pretty small. I also have a few that haven't come up that I've transplanted. Uh, these are my uh, butch tea, turdide scorpion. I have a few of those going. And also uh, paprika pepper, which I grew last year. And uh, they produced a lot. I was, I was almost sick of them. And uh, then I actually pickled some of those. I had so much left over that I enjoyed them much more uh, pickled than I enjoyed them um, just eating them raw. I never actually ended up making paprika out of them, but yeah, I'm sure they would make a nice pepper for that. Uh, they're not really very hot at all. They're a little bit hotter than a bell pepper, but that's about it. Now, I have a few uh, extra peppers that I also have going. They haven't yet germinated. Uh, I'm doing the poblano pepper, um, jalapeno. I don't know why. My jalapeno is having really a hard time germinating, but we'll see. And... Uh, also, I'm starting some other peppers. I can't remember. I, I think, oh yeah, I'm starting a yellow ghost pepper as well. Incidentally, kind of fun fact, uh, between the jalapeno pepper, the green bell pepper, and the poblano pepper, they're all actually the same pepper. They're just different variations of the same pepper. They're basically like bread to, you know, the jalapeno's bread to be a small little pepper that's hot. Um, the poblano is sort of a cross between where it's, you know, a big fat pepper, but it's a little bit hot. And then, you know, the bell pepper is a lot more, uh, mild. So let me show you one of the ways I stir peppers. I quite often do use, um, uh, the very common, uh, Ziploc with a paper towel inside method. It works great most of the time with peppers, uh, because they generally take longer to germinate. Um, that works okay, but for some of the super hots, uh, they take so long, and if you are checking them every three days, uh, it gets really tedious. So another method I like to use, that's also a little bit less um, of a mess, is to just take uh, two plates. I like these because they're plastic, but you can use any type of plates really. Um, and I like the I like because these are durable too. Um, some people I know use styrofoam plates for this, but I'm not too worried about that. And I also put a little arrow so I know roughly um, where the seeds are. I have four quadrants, four different types of seeds, but I also have the corners labeled. I could show you that. Well, it's kind of hard to see. I have the corners labeled so I know which pepper is in each of the four sections. So I lift that up. And I can just take a look by gently pulling up. What I have are two, basically two layers of paper towels. I have my bottom layer, then I have my seeds, then I have a top layer. And it's all wet. Um, I, I wet it from a spray bottle, I don't pour water. You can start it and pour water the first time, but don't use a ton or else uh, your seeds can get really nasty. So I don't know how well you can see. Uh, a couple of mine have germinated. Uh, I checked this two days ago, and yeah, I see more germination. This is more of my butch tea, uh, Trinidad scorpion peppers. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, well, if you can see it, that's great. If not, you gotta trust me. Another key to this method is you want to keep things uh, sort of patted down so that the two layers of paper towel are just snug around the seed, so it's getting contact on both sides. So it's, you know, it's sort of like putting a seed to bed so it's all snug. So I'm going to let the couple in here that sprouted go a little bit bigger. I like them to develop a bit of a root system rather than just let them, you know, crack open. You can, you can, uh, you can just put them in the soil once they start, once the seeds cracked open and sprouted. I just prefer to let them get a little bit more mature. And yeah, when I put this away, I take a grocery bag. I like to use a durable one. Fold it up like this. It's not 100% airtight, but it's enough that the water is not going to all evaporate overnight. I can usually check it every two days and I don't have to uh, respray it with water. 
Yeah, and I put it on my hot water heater. That way the air around it and uh, the surface underneath is uh, really helps the germination. And I don't have to buy heat mat that way. Heat mats are fine though. Um, I'm just cheap. And here's a quick look at my grow setup that I have right now. I just have this kind of setup for when I'm starting young seedlings. And then I put them down to kind of a more heavy duty setup, which is more like this. So I'll be doing that, propping them up, uh, once I get more of my things going. But for now I'm sticking with this. This is a dual T8 system and then also right beside it I have these other bulbs. One of those is a LED, one of them is a CFL. I'm growing some other things that I'm not disclosing yet but um, they'll probably be in other videos. So that's it. Uh, tomatoes, tomato-like plants are next. They'll probably be starting maybe in the next week. Depends what I feel like doing at the time. Uh, probably in about a week I'll be starting those. Uh, anyways, have a great day. Thanks for watching.